All right, so this week I thought we would venture into a little bit more 3D. Um, um, just not too long ago, I did a post on the blog uh, talking about 3D and getting some people's perspectives on it. And got a lot of people that are curious about it, not too sure if they want to venture into it. And I just wanted to show some possibilities you can have by using these very simple tools inside that are built inside Photoshop CS4 Extended. So let's begin by of course creating a new document here I have a document set up with a black background I'm gonna go ahead and create a new blank layer and let's go over here in the toolbar and select the brush tool here in the toolbar I'm gonna go into the brush menu here and you wanna open up your assorted brushes if you go into the flyout menu and choose assorted brushes you'll get a collection of these various types of brushes you got here and what the one we want is this one right here at the bottom it's called texture 4 and it just has this kind of, you know, weird effect going on there. Well, I'm going to increase that brush size a little bit. And let's go in here and change its behaviors inside of the brush options. And you can see what it's looking like right now. And it's not necessarily what I want. We're going to take the spacing here and put it all the way down to one. So it gives me more of a streak look. Then we're going to go over here in the shape dynamics and simply activate the pen pressure. Now, if you're not using a pressure sensitive tablet, I would still, you're still going to want to activate this anyway because we're going to utilize the pen pressure but not by using a pen. And it'll make sense in just a moment. Let's take the size jitter and drop it all the way down to zero and leave all the other settings at zero. So inside Shape Dynamics, you're only going to set the pen pressure for the size. And again, doesn't matter if you have a pressure sensitive pen or not. So that's all set. If I just do a little test stroke here, you're getting, you see, we're getting a nice cool streak there. Well, now what I want to do is I'm going to take my pen tool and go up here in the top right corner of the document. I'm just going to click once and go down here to the bottom left corner and just put a long diagonal line along the length of my document, or diagonally along the document here. Now let's go to the Paths panel, and there you can see that there's that current working path. I'm going to go into the Flyout menu here, and we're going to choose Stroke Path, and you'll get this window here, and we're going to choose the brush that we just used but we're also going to check on simulate pressure. This is why you don't necessarily need the pen, but you do need that feature turned on in order to utilize the simulate pressure. And when I click OK, you'll see we get that streak going right across the file right there on that layer. Well, now what I'm going to do is with that layer selected, we're going to go into the 3D menu and choose new shape from layer, and we're going to do a sphere. And what it's going to do is take that streak and wrap it around a three-dimensional sphere. So now we have our streak wrapped around our 3D object. And if I go over here and grab my 3D rotation tool in the toolbar, and I click and rotate around, you can see that it's wrapped around there. But the problem is, I don't want to see the entire sphere. I just want to see that streak. So we're going to have to mask that out in 3D. So. Over here in the Layers panel, I'm going to go in here and double click on the Layer 1. And what it's going to do is open up the file that it's basically generating the 3D object from. And there's our streak that we created originally. I'm going to go into the Image menu and go down here to Duplicate. And it'll create a duplicate of that file. Here in the Layers panel, I'm going to hold down my Command key and then click the New Layer icon. It's going to pop a new layer underneath that stroke layer. That Yeah, the stroke layer. And I'm simply going to fill this with black. I'm going to press Shift Delete, and in the Use menu, we're going to select black, click OK, and there we have it. Well, now let's go over to the Layer menu and flatten this file. And this is going to be the masks that we use to mask out the shape on that 3D object. So let's go into the file, go to Save As. So we need to save it out as a doc, as a new document, and we'll save it out as a PSD right on my desktop, so I can find it easily and click Save, and that document's good to go. So we'll close that, go back to our original file here, and I'm going to close that, and now we're back in our document that has our 3D object. Well now let's go into the window menu and we're going to open up the 3D panel. Here in the top you've got these four tabs. I'm going to click on the third one, which is the materials section, and right here in opacity, you can see we've got 100% opacity, and we can add a file to this. So we're going to go to the flyout menu here and choose load texture and we're going to locate that mask file we just created. And it works very, the, very much the same way as a layer mask. It's going to reveal that object in the streak area and hide it everywhere where, where it's black. So we'll click Open, and it's going to apply that on there, and you'll notice right away we have a 3D streak going on here. Now if I grab that 3D rotation tool and move it around, 
we've got a very cool 3D object here, or 3D streak. But I want to change the color. So let's reopen that 3D panel. And in that same material section, we're gonna, you've got an object here or a section here called self-illumination. If you click on that and simply choose a new color, the object will assume that color there, as you see. And it's using the lighting that's inside the scene. You see we've got some infinite lights here. I'm gonna go and leave those alone. And now I can maneuver this around and I've got a fully colored object. Well, let's go a step further and create a duplicate of that layer. And let's maneuver that around in 3D space and we get another object like that. Now let's go ahead and give that a different color. Again, let's open up that 3D panel and let's give this perhaps something really outrageous like a green, perhaps even a greenish blue. We can always change these colors after the fact. That's the beauty of it. And I can maneuver this in space. I can scale it down a little bit, move it around, do all kinds of different things to it. Let's add perhaps one more layer and we'll just maneuver that in 3D space. And let's give this a color of blue, perhaps. Something more bluish. I think that looks pretty good. Now, you might see a little bit of uh, rough edges going on in here on all these layers. Let's simply go into the first item here, and that's the anti-aliasing. And by default, it's set to draft. Let's simply change it to best. And it should smooth out those lines on each one of these objects, making it a little bit more appealing. And we'll do that very last one here. Set that to best. So now we've got those objects in play and we can maneuver these around in three-dimensional space, scale them. Let's take all of these layers, select all three. Oh, you, oh well, we can't select all three when they're 3D objects. I'm just gonna maneuver them over to the side of the document here. I forgot about that part. And we'll select this one and position this right over here. So now, let's assume I like these positioning. I'm gonna select this top 3D layer and hold down my shift key and select the one right beneath it. And we're gonna go into the 3D menu and go down here to merge 3D layers. And what it's gonna do is not necessarily group them together, but it's gonna position them or put them basically on one 3D layer that I can manipulate in space. Now you can see it's rendering my polygons depending on the size of the objects it may take a moment. But now once it's done, if I grab that 3D rotation tool, it now th renders those in 3D space together, just like that. So that looks pretty good. All right, so now we'll zoom out there a little bit and we've got those elements there. I'm going to add a couple more things here. Let's go into the toolbar, grab my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to drag out a rectangular box the length of the document here and let's of course create a new blank layer and I'm going to go ahead and fill it with white. Just press option delete and let's take that one 3D layer and drag it above that strip and let's take that 3D layer and reposition it so we've got a little bit more three-dimensional things happening here, that looks just like that. All right, so now what I wanna do is add a quick drop shadow on this. So I add a quick drop shadow on this 3D layer just to give it a little bit more dimension. So we'll activate that, let's go into the document and just kind of push this down and increase the size so it's blurred up a little bit and that gives it, makes it appear that it's raised off of that object a little bit more. So that's looking pretty good. So let's actually scale this 3D object up a little bit. So over here, I'm gonna uh, go right on my axis widget and highlight that square in the middle and just drag upward and it will scale that 3D object up a little bit more. So we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and add one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and make a duplicate, another duplicate of this layer. I'm gonna press Command J on my keyboard and let's grab that 3D rotation tool and again, drag this and position it in a different angle, perhaps like that. And you can use your axis widget to of course resize it by going in here and highlighting over these particular objects. And in fact, I'm gonna highlight over this one and squeeze that in a little bit. As you can see, it's resizing that object in there. And let's maybe stretch it vertically. We'll hover over this We'll hover over this blue shape and just stretch that out vertically. 
by dragging downward. And now we're looking pretty good with the 3D. So now, we've got all those objects. All I'm gonna really do now is just to add a quick text. You know, let's go over here and add dimension. We've got a very cool font here. And let's use that same kind of pinkish color that we've got for the ribbon in the background there. And you know what, let's add one more thing right here just to finish this design off. I'm gonna select that bottom layer, the background layer, and create a new layer above that one. And let's grab a light blue color here. I'm gonna go into my toolbar and grab my gradient tool, and let's grab the radial gradient. I'm just gonna drag out a gradient from behind this element. And it makes it a little bit more dimensional. You can see the shadows a little bit more on that background just to give it a little bit more of a cool factor to it. In fact, since we're talking about dimensions here, let's select this text and throw a quick layer style on that. A little bit of a drop shadow, maybe a little bit of a bevel and emboss there. And that pretty much does it. So there we go. Very cool, very awesome ways of using 3D tools to create interesting design elements all right there inside Photoshop.